something I hear all the time is, my child doesn't really get sick, so I never bring him to the doctor. I wanna to talk today about preventative or preventive care for pediatrics and why it's important. If you're new here, my name is Dr. E. I'm a board certified pediatrician and I'm also a new mom. I make fun informative videos about my life as a physician and pediatrics and everything in between. If that content sounds interesting to you, I would love if you would subscribe to the channel. You can also find me on Instagram and TikTok. My username is the primary pediatrician on all of those platforms. All right, so this is something I'm really passionate about. As a primary pediatrician, I work in a clinic, I do well visits all day long, and preventive care is one of my very favorite things. As a pediatrician and a primary care physician, my goal is to create a medical home. If that term is new to you or not something that you've heard before, I'm gonna kind of walk you through what that means. So in this medical home, this metaphor that I'm talking about, to provide primary care that is accessible so you can see your doctor, you can schedule appointments, care that is continuous and comprehensive. In pediatrics, care that is family-centered, so parents are involved, grandparents, guardians, care that is coordinated and care that is compassionate and also care that's culturally effective. All of these characteristics comprise this medical home, um, kind of this imaginary home that I think of in my head. I really like the name a medical home because to me, home is where you're cozy and comfy and feel comfortable. And that's what I want my office to feel like to families. So, so along with this medical home, it's also important that we identify any barriers to care. So any barriers with transportation or barriers to affording medicine or, or any of these needs that we have as humans. So it's really important as a pediatrician to make sure that our children are taken care of as well, because a lot of times they can't tell us so talking with families and making sure that there's no barriers that we can help with. So now that I've kind of described this medical home, this ideal doctor's office in my head and kind of described to you that process, I wanna talk about what we do at these visits where I want you to feel comfortable and safe. So these visits are well visits and a lot of times people go to the doctor because they're sick or you know their leg hurts or they're having um, a cough or something like that. But a well visit is where you go to the doctor without a big concern. So you might have a few small questions, which is fine, but you're not going with back pain or a cough. You're going for preventive care. Of course, if you have a concern or something, please bring it up to your pediatrician at your well visit. But generally, it's good to schedule a different visit to talk about specific concerns and leave the well visit for more of the preventive care. So now that I kind of outlined these well visits, what are we gonna talk about at well visits or why are they important? So just like I said, the very first thing about a well visit is identifying any specific concerns or questions that a family may have. So that goes without saying, I do that at every single appointment. So after we do that, a lot of times we'll begin by just kind of chatting with the child or the family, kind of a summary of the child's progress and their development. And I try to do this in a strength-based framework. So what is the child good at? Or what are they doing really well in in school? Sometimes I'll ask, what's your favorite subject? Or what's your favorite thing that you've learned over the last few weeks? And this kind of gives the child a chance to get a little praise from their parents. A lot of times I'll specifically ask the parents, you know, what is, um, what is your child really good at or what are you proud of them kind of in this last year since we've seen you last makes the kids a little uncomfortable but i think it's really important for them to hear that praise from their parents so next we'll kind of move into the surveillance part of the well visit and this is kind of a funny term um, but we actually use it a lot in pediatrics so this is talking about the child's diet talking about what they're doing after school what their grades are like what what grade they're in, their teachers, how they get along with kids at school. So these are all kind of things that we're just surveilling, uh, making sure that everything seems like it's going okay. If we see a huge problem, we'll definitely intervene. Um, a lot of times this comes in the way of, you know, what the child is eating or the amount of screen time they're getting or the amount of exercise. And I think it's really important that um, your doctor is not coming from a place of judgment. And so that is something to really, really think about, that we're not judging you, we're not telling you something is wrong. We're just usually giving evidence-based recommendations on um, what can make your child be happier and healthier. 
So along with this surveillance of the well visit, there's really four big pillars of the well visit. So there's disease prevention, disease detection, health promotion, and then anticipatory guidance. So we do lots of different things at well visits to detect disease. We will sometimes do a finger poke to check for a hemoglobin level to see if your child's anemic. We'll do a finger poke to check for a lead level to see if your child's been exposed to environmental lead. So there's a lot of different ways that we can do screening. Also do developmental screens. So we'll screen for autism. We'll screen for global developmental delays. So we'll kind of do a lot of different screening in a lot of different ways. So along with this disease detection, we'll also do disease prevention. Usually this comes in the way of vaccinations. So um, lots of different vaccines. You can look at the CDC schedule um, for children from birth to 18 if you have questions about vaccines. So we've got disease detection, disease prevention. Now we'll talk about health promotion. So this is a really important part of the well visit and something I think that's really important in pediatrics because we can talk about different lifestyle habits that we can develop as children and as adolescents that can continue throughout their whole life. So really identifying some of these habits at a young age can set them up to be really happy and healthy in the future. So examples of health promotion are going to be a healthy diet, talking about exercise, encouraging sports and extracurricular activities. I also like to ask parents if they have any questions about different health topics. Sometimes parents will say, hey, you know, I heard this diet was really good for kids. What do you think about it? And I think this is a really good time for some um, health education and just a really um, casual conversation with families about anything that they have questions on. So the very last part of the well visit is going to be anticipatory guidance. So this is the part of the visit that really, really varies on age. So if you have an infant or a two month old, a four month old, you're gonna talk a lot about safe sleep. You're gonna talk about car seats, how to know if a car seat, um, if a baby's in a car seat safely. I'm um, talking about, you know, fevers in infants. Those are all anticipatory guidance that would be more for a newborn. Then in your kind of toddlerhood, you could talk about potty training, talking about water safety, sun safety if kids are outside. As we get into more childhood, um, talking about, you know, are you wearing a helmet? Do you wear your seatbelt? In adolescence, a lot of the time, my anticipatory guidance talks a lot about what to do about peer pressure, not texting while we're driving, limiting screen time, being safe on social media. So it really, really depends. And this part is really kind of an art. Uh, I feel like uh, my pediatric residency, my three years of residency really prepared me well to kind of have a nice conversation for each of these well visits with really appropriate and high yield anticipatory guidance for families. So all of that together kind of composes that very specific well visit that we do in pediatrics. Now, of course, we have a physical exam and we take vital signs. So this is more just as a doctor, what I do and kind of what I'm thinking about as I'm going through a well visit with a child. Now, the very last thing I wanna say about well visits is I think it's really important to have a good relationship with your pediatrician for your child. Um, your pediatrician can always be a really good advocate for your child, so it's great to have a good relationship with them. And then I think it also really sets them up for success as an adult um, because they already are kind of medically literate or medically competent. So, you know, they're used to talking with doctors. They know that, you know, they're gonna listen to their heart and lungs and there's gonna be a physical exam. Um, sometimes they have to get into an uncomfortable gown. And so I think it's really good to kind of establish this expectation as as a child where they feel comfortable with a healthcare provider, they can trust their physician that way as they become an adult and have to probably see doctors a little bit more frequently, they already know what to expect. They know kind of how to navigate um, their own health. They can advocate for themselves, which is really important as well. So having regular appointments with your pediatrician can set your child up for success in that way as well. All right, so I am 
going to end this video here. I could talk about the importance of primary care probably all day long, so I won't bother you anymore with that. If you have additional questions about uh, primary care, my track to being a primary care pediatrician, or anything like that, leave them in the comments below and I will answer them. Uh, if you have any additional questions, please leave them below. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok, The Primary Pediatrician, on all of those platforms, and I will see you in my video next week. Bye.